Hello everyone, this is Terry Mitchell. And there's going to be a slight challenge with our uh, guests today. We, as you can probably tell, there's a, a, a rooster or cop uh, going off in the background, which is quite hilarious. And it joins my lovely guests today. I'm going to be interviewing Lillian Debo Eyong over in, now you're in uh, Cameroon, isn't that correct? You're right. Fantastic, fantastic. So before we get started, uh, Lillian, for those who have not watched or uh, even heard the podcast or watched the interviews through Voice on Fire, the intention behind these interviews is to provide a platform across the globe to anyone that is making a difference, perhaps in their community or perhaps to a, a wider audience. And today's interview with Lillian, I think is going to really impress and inspire so many of you because Lillian's story is, is really quite amazing. And as I was reading up about Lillian, I was, I was really quite awestruck. And I would really like to start that interview by introducing Lillian. And where we will start is Lillian, tell us a bit about what it is you do who you're doing it for and why you do it. So let's start with what it is you do. Let's pick just that first part to do with the Lillian Debo Foundation. Share a little bit about that and then we'll open that up. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Lillian Debo Ayon. I will just start with the CEO of Lillian Debo Foundation. You know, what made me to, to create the Lillian Debo Foundation or to form the Lillian Debo Foundation is due to the stigmatization, the rejection, the, the marginalization, the stereotype that persons with disability go through on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I'm a person with disability, I'm a young woman with disability. I'm a polio survivor. I've been living with polio now, with, with disability now for 24 years, mm -hmm. sitting on a wheelchair every day of my life. Mm -hmm. So it has not been easy. Due to the things I've gone through, the psychological trauma, the emotional trauma, the, the physical abuse, and, and all whatnot, <laughs> you know, I, I always put myself in the shoes of especially women and girls with disability, because I know what I'm going through. Maybe some of them are going through worse situations than me. Mm -hmm. So that was the main reason of forming the Lilian Zibo Foundation, is to give back that voice that has been stolen from persons with disability. Yeah. It's to restore that dignity that has been taken away from persons with disability. It's to restore that hope that had been lost mm -hmm. due to the aspect of disability. Lillian Debo Foundation is just all about restoring the dignity, the hope, the, the self-esteem that disability took away from persons with disability. Mm -hmm. So we bring back that hope through financial empowerment, through vocational training, through training on disability rights advocacy, through mm -hmm. training on peace advocacy, through training on women's rights advocacy and children's rights. So we do all of that because we, we want to, to, to make persons with disabilities see themselves as active agents of change. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Change is not all about getting more disabled involved in it. We persons with disability, we have that potential in us. We have the ideas are there. We have the brain. We are, we are educated. We have those skills. But the society has seen us as a no-go area, as a place where nothing good can be found in it. But let me tell you something, Terry. You, you can find gold in a trash. Mm. Yeah. You can find a lot of gold in a trash. You just need to keep searching. You just yeah. need to keep searching in that trash box. And hopefully and definitely and surely you must, you must find gold in it. Yeah. So that is what we, we are trying to do. The Lilian Zibo Foundation is trying to let 
persons with disability not to see themselves as outcasts. We are not outcasts. We mm -hmm. are humans mm -hmm. and we have our rights. And the society needs to, to, to see us as people who are fit to occupy positions economically, socially, and politically. Absolutely. That's it. Absolutely. I think that's just, you, you speak so strongly for people who are definitely in need of a voice. And, and I, I thoroughly echo that oftentimes we find that people who are in some way different to what we consider normal don't get heard. They feel inferior. They're often treated differently and don't get that opportunity to be represented and who better to represent them than somebody who knows what that experience is like? And I, I applaud you because in the, the reading of your um, biography that obviously I, I grabbed some of that information so that I'm aware of your situation and your story to bring forward today. And I was reading through and, and I'm, I think that what you have achieved in such a short amount of time is quite incredible. If it, it's really quite astounding that you can go through the hardships that you've undoubtedly faced and still find not so much just that little bit of gold, which is so true, but to see hope and to see your purpose. And it's so it's I'm really fascinated. You've also written a book and you also host a radio program that is of the same name. Share, share with our listeners about that. Oh, with the aspect of the book, it all started in January last year, 2019. Last year, 2019, in the early, early, early months of 2019, I was going through a lot of psychological trauma. Mm -hmm. That was, that was three years after I dropped out from the university due to the ongoing Anglophone crisis here in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. I went through a lot, a, through acute trauma and, and deep depression to a point where I thought of taking my life. Yeah, there was one day I was sitting in the parlor and that thought came in my mind. Like, what's the essence of you living? What are you living for? You know, just look at your life. I don't know. The thoughts keep, keep coming. Look at your life. There is nothing you can do. You are disabled. You have dropped out of school. Your, your, your educational career is gone. Your, your, your dreams are shattered. There is nothing you can do. You know, I, I'm sorry for sounding too emotional. Oh, it's a... <sighs> It's a deeply emotional subject, and I'm grateful that you are here to be able to share that story. So, exactly. Yeah, there are a lot of people who will be able to relate to that darkness. I've been in that darkness myself for different reasons, but I, I applaud you for still being here and, and sharing more of that story. Yeah. So I, I looked around me in the palo. There was nothing like a rezo or a knife that I could use. I thought of cutting my vein for my hand, you know, so that I would just slowly die and maybe free myself from all the bondage, the suffering that disability has brought upon me. Then I'll, I had another thought again that, okay, you don't have to do it today. Maybe you do it some other time where there is nobody in the house that is going to help you, that is going to take you to the hospital so that uh, before they could come, um, you must have ended it all. So I don't know, I would say it was God that helped me because the whole of that week, we had so many people in the house. There was never a day I was alone. Three days after that thought came, that suicidal thought came, I had an encounter with Agbo Matelo. He's somebody I respect so much. He's a psychosocial counselor. Yeah, he came to the house for a visit. I don't know, he just sensed that something was going wrong with me and he engaged me in a discussion 
we chatted and in the course of the discussion, I had to air out my mind that this is what I am going through and I am tired of this life. He challenged me. He said, someday you are going to be somebody's queen. He said, I am somebody's king and you are going to be somebody's queen. So preserve that life. Preserve that life for that person that you are going to, to be his queen. And there is something deep down inside of you that the world is looking for. There is something inside of you that your peers need. You have a purpose. God did not create you for nothing. He created you for a reason. And you need to accomplish that purpose while you are living. If you die, there is nobody that is going to accomplish it for you. You have that sole responsibility as a human being that is alive to do it. Not even for your sake, but for the sake of others. Then he told me, stop living in isolation. Stop living in the house. Just step out and explore. When you go outside, you will meet opportunities. You will meet people who change your mindset. You will meet people who encourage you. Trust me, Terry. I grabbed onto that step out and explore. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing that sank into my mind. Yeah. Step out and explore. When he left, I went into the room. I told myself that Lilian Dibo Ayon from today, disability is gone. Somebody has challenged you and you are going to challenge the world of disability. Wow. From that day, I removed this from the ability. I don't see this. I don't see the DIS. The DIS is written in very small letters. Mm -hmm. And the ability is boldly written in capital letters. You know, I, so I just focused on that ability. And that day in the evening, something just came into my mind, living with disability. Mm -hmm. The same day Abu Matelo left, something dropped in me, living with disability. I was like, wow, why can't I write something about it? Then I took a pen and a paper. I started writing. I started writing about my whole life experience. Mm -hmm. I started writing about the way the society treats persons with disability. I started writing about how the government sometimes says that they are working for persons with disability, but when we look critically into it, persons with disability are deteriorating each second of the day. But we have those laws written. We have those laws well articulated, but why are they not implementing it? For somebody like me, I've gone through a lot and persons with disability are going through worse conditions that I have been through. Who is going to help us? Some people say they are fighting for the rights of persons with disabilities, some non-governmental -organ non organizations. They say they are fighting for the rights of persons with disability, whereas they use those money to enrich themselves. They buy expensive cars. They build expensive houses. They live in luxury. Why persons with disability are, 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 are are dying each second of the day, if not physically, but psychologically, emotionally, we are dying. Who is there to fight for us? Who is that person that is going to speak out that plight that, that we are going through right deep inside of us? I told myself that there is no other person that is going to say it the way it is than us persons with disability. And if there is one man that is going to stand to fight for, for the rights of persons with disability without compromising, that should be Lilian Tipo Ayo. I told myself that, and I wrote it in the book. I wrote how the society needs to address persons with disability. You know, there are times where just what comes out from somebody's mouth it, 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 it kills you psychologically. Just the way you are being addressed publicly, it, it, it destroys your dignity. It destroys that self-esteem. It makes the society look so down on you. Like, 
like you are nothing, you know, you are not worth it. So it is high time the society see persons with disability on a positive perspective. It's not all about our physical appearance, no. It's not all about the way Lilian Zibo look physically. I do not concentrate on what I look physically. I do not concentrate on a visually impaired person, whether he, if he is blind. It's not about the physical eyes. It's about the eyes of the mind. Mm. It's about the eyes of the mind. I, I, I do not concentrate if, I do not concentrate on a hearing impaired person. It's not about what the ears hear. It's about what the mind hears, you know? I do not concentrate on what a, a verbal impaired, a speech impaired person is going through. It is not all about what the mouth speaks. It's about what comes from the mind. It's not all about what the mouth speaks. It's about what comes from the mind, right deep inside of you, right deep inside. That is where I concentrate. That is where, you know, <laughs> that is where I so much focus on. So with that aspect, I started the radio program on Kavari Good News Radio here in Kumba, precisely, yeah, precisely in Kumba, Cameroon, where I hold this program every Sunday from one o'clock to two o'clock. It's an hours program. Mm -hmm. I reach out to the community and thank God that the waves go so far, you know, <laughs> it's far-fetched. I reach out to the community and it's an open call program where people call to give your contributions okay. based on the topic discussed on that particular day. Wow. You know, they give their contributions, what they think the society should do, what they think people should do, what they think families with persons with disability, for persons with disability should do, what they think the disabled persons, the, the persons with disability themselves, what they should do because each and every one of us have our responsibilities. Mm. We have a role to play, beginning from the family. We have a role to play. Because there is one thing I have realized is that the negative aspect of disability comes from the family. It is how you are being nurtured, mm -hmm. you know, if you come from a family where they see you as a nobody, trust me, that mentality will stick. Yeah. As a person with disability, that nobody mentality, nobody in quotes mentality will, will speak. That good for nothing in quotes mentality will stick. Will, will stick, sorry. It will stick in your mind. Mm. Yeah. Even if you grow up and you become somebody you know, somebody with, with potentials. But there is something that the family has inculcated in you from the onset, from childhood, that there is nothing you can, you can give out. You will struggle to do it. If you reach a point where it, it is so stressful, you will back off. Mm -hmm. Because you have that mentality that you cannot go further than this. But you, if you come from a family background where they give a push to you each step of the way, where they get you inclusive in every activity as a child with disability, whether in house chores, in family discussions, they get you enrolled in school, they, 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 they get you socialized, you know, when they want to go out as a family, they take you out as well mm -hmm. because they want you to belong. And if you grow up with that mentality, you fit yourself in whatever situation you find yourself. Wow, yeah. Yeah. You just fit yourself in it. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's the purpose of the radio program, to, 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 to educate families with, that has children with disability, mm -hmm. how they can nurture their child, how they can bring up their child in a way that they should grow so that eventually, if they get mature, they will never depart from that mentality of positivity. Yeah. They, will not, what, yeah. that, that's, that's they will not depart from that. They will not that mentality of, of focus, of striving in order to achieve. 
that, that's really, really so, so well put and so well described the impact that just, and not so much the immediate biological family, but also any extended people within our environment. If we, exactly. if we don't acknowledge people for their potential and look beyond whatever the physical capabilities, then, then we're able to encourage people. And I, I totally agree. We, when we speak about somebody, if we speak inclusively, if we acknowledge them, if we bring them into everything and, and just pay no mind to the fact that there may be a physical limitation of some kind or perhaps something's going on for them that is physically restrictive, then it's up to us to be inclusive in our behaviours and the way we engage with somebody and to acknowledge them. And I, I'm curious with your radio program, how often do you find people call in and talk about the, the positive things that are happening because of the exposure that you are creating? Okay. <laughs> Every, every, every session of the program has an open call for people to chip in their contribution on what they think should be done or shouldn't be done. So in a day, based on that program, I receive, I receive more than 200 calls because ev yes, everybody wants to participate. Wow. Everybody, everybody wants to participate. It has created so much impact in such a way that even after the radio program, people keep calling. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they keep calling. Like Lillian, I, I listened to your program. I, you know, I struggled to call, but the line was so busy that I couldn't get to you on air. I really wanted to contribute on air. People wow. have been calling and sometimes somebody will meet me on the way. Just the way I was speak, the person will say, hey, I've listened to this voice, this, this, this disability right activist. I've listened to this voice, you know. So it has, it has really been, it has really been uh, impactful. And families with disability have been getting in touch with me, asking me on what advice can I give them. They have this child who is visually impaired or physically impaired or speech impaired. What do I think should be done in what way and on, in what capacity should they go in order to make sure that the child comes out of that aspect of isolation the way I have done? You know, I've had, I've had women and girls calling me, you know, to counsel them on how they should, they should go about their daily lives. I've, I, don't, I, I, I cannot say it all, but by the grace of God, just because of what I do, I've been seen as a role model, not only for persons with disability, but non-disabled persons too. Mm. Yeah. yeah. When I read through your bio, there are so many things. I didn't really have room to put it all on the flyer because you've, you've just so actively participated and created so many meaningful either activities, organisations or events or done things that have shown that you are absolutely an amazing role model to show people that taking responsibility for not only ourselves, but also the greater community, it's something that once we put ourselves in that position, there are many others who gravitate to us, who want to see what we're doing and who hear what we're doing and feel that they are drawn to that. You're, you've created, um, I believe there was another activist uh, program that for women and girls with disability. Now, is what was the other one that you had there? Because I know you've got so many incredible things you've been doing. Okay, I, 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 I just formed the Women and Girls with Disability Peace Advocacy Network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a network of all the women and girls here in Cameroon that have been, that have been fighting for the rights of persons with disability. So I didn't think necessary to form a single body that will govern all of us mm -hmm. for the sake of peace, yep. for the sake of peace advocacy. Because according to my research, I have seen that here in Cameroon, persons with disability have not been 
very active as far as peace building is concerned. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the Anglophone crisis here in Cameroon has, has had a devastating effect on persons with disability. Yeah. yeah. If, if people, if, if the normal, in quotes, if the normal people here in Cameroon have had a 50% uh, uh, negative effect due to the crisis, I will tell you without any fear or favor, Terry, that we persons with disability have had about 95% of the effect. We felt it so badly. We felt it so badly. I am an example due to the crisis. I dropped out of school. You know, my fa I, I struggled to convince my family that I can continue, but they said, no. What if you are killed along the line? What if, you know, you are being caught by a stray bullet because it was so hot by then? Yeah. So they told me that your life is more important. Mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you can achieve that, that your educational career later on, but preserve that life for us. You know, wow. we, have, we, have gone through, we have gone through a lot of it. And that was, that was the main motivation for me to create that group for peace. Mm -hmm. So that we women with, and girls with disability here in Cameroon, we will speak that peace. We will advocate for that peace. We need peace. Mm -hmm. We need things to come back to normal. We need to live a normal life. We need to go out without any fear of any stray bullets. We need to go out and, and we, 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 are not, we are not scared that maybe during the evenings everywhere will be locked they will say there is lockdown you know we need that liberty we need a situation where our children will go to school peacefully yeah. without any fear of anything you know a theory it was so it was so heartbroken i i i i i had to cry for for almost a week you know it was so heartbroken that last month uh, on the 24th of October, is it October? Yes, October. We, we had a situation here in Cameroon where children were shot in class. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, about seven, seven of them died. So many of them got injured. In class, you can imagine that, in class. Those who were able to run, they ran and they were saved. You know, I due to that, I I I thought a whole lot for what, excuse me, for one good week. What if a child with disability was there? You know, that child would have been would have been shot because there was no way for that child to run and save his or her life. That thing kept me crying for one good week. And that was the reason I had to form that Women and Girls with Disability Peace Advocacy Network. We need to advocate for peace. We need peace here in Cameroon because the situation has gone off hand to an extent that nobody knows what is going to happen in the next second. I can't even so, imagine. Yeah, so other people have been advocating, but persons with disability have not come out to advocate. So it is time for us to advocate for that peace. We don't know how long it is going to take, but our voices are going to contribute if that peace is going to be restored. Our voices will contribute to, to, the, to the restoration of that peace. Mm -hmm. We also have to be proud in the future that we advocated and peace was restored. We don't care to know how long it's going to take, but all what we believe is that one day it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we, are also be, we will also be proud that we contributed to the restoration of that peace. Absolutely. Yeah, I think what you're saying is so, so important that even what may be considered a minority of people, as in the vast population may not have ability challenges, but the small group of community that does have can have a very powerful voice. And you, you provide such a, a great 
service, not only as an advocate, but also as somebody who has, has gone through your own deeply, deeply challenging situation and decided to take the power from within you and turn that into you're a, you're a force to be reckoned with, which is just quite amazing. And I think it's important that the reason I do the platform, this Voice on Fire interviews is quite often we don't, in other countries, I'm in Australia and I'm incredibly grateful that I don't have that stress that you talk about of a government or war type situation taking place in my own country where it would be scary to even go outside of my door for fear of being shot. Now, I don't have that to worry about, although, yes, crime does happen here, not to any degree as what you speak of. And I'm incredibly grateful for that. So for me, it was important for me to be able to be the voice for those people in other countries. Thank God for the internet that gives us this privilege, but being able to give the voice to people like yourself who are just incredibly courageous and inspirational and doing things that, that make a difference in an area of the world that a lot of us might not even know about. And I'll, I'll say quite openly, when I was reading your profile, I wasn't quite sure what the Anglophone crisis was and I'd heard of it, but it just never registered to me. So I did some research and it basically for in just general terms equates to a civil war in Cameroon and it's it's just astounding to think that throughout the world there are countries where war is taking place as people are trying to go about daily existence and then people in groups like yourself the the less represented uh, people with ability challenges how, how do you how do you focus? How do you stay strong? How do you stay capable of just wanting to make a difference? And you speak about that as, as somebody who is on a mission. So I'm really interested to know with the book that you've created and also with the radio program, are there any other aspects to your, uh, um, I suppose, your future that you can see perhaps are you looking at maybe some kind of career in uh, politics? Is that something that you aspire to? Thank you, Terry. Uh, the thing is, I've never been a lover of politics. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never admired politics because there is this thing that uh, politics is a dating game, you know. I want to live my life where I am not um, obliged to do some things the way people want me to do them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't want to get myself involved in a place where people will tell me what to do, mm -hmm. at what time to do, and how to do it. Mm -hmm. No. I want to live a free life where I do things the way I believe deep down inside of me that this is the right thing to do and this is the right time to do it. Yeah, because I will, I will tell you that uh, to get into politics is something that will, it will kill my, my dream, it will kill my aspirations, it will, it will reduce the impact of what I intend to do because uh, I've not even started, I've not started my journey in life. I've not started my journey of impact. I've not started my journey of inspiration, of inspiring people. I have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. And if I should get into politics today, that journey, that legacy that I want to leave, trust me, I will not be able to leave it because I will have to compromise with so many things. Yeah. I want to live my life unapologetically. Mm -hmm doing what I want to do at the time I want to do it and the way I want it to be done so that the lives of other people will be transformed. It's, about, it's all about transforming other people's lives. It's not all about myself. Yeah, I don't live my life for myself. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I had to get into so many, so many advocacy missions in such a way that at the end of the week, I, I will break down 
But at the end of the day, I will tell myself that Debo, it is not all about you. Lillian, it is not all about you. You are not living your life for yourself. If you should break down today, there are so many things that is going to go wrong. So many things are going to go wrong. You just have to, you just have to keep pushing. You just have to keep pushing. And you just have to keep pushing. If I think about my peers with disability, you know, if I think about my, my family with disability, I have enough reason, enough reason to strive, enough reason to stay focused on what I believe is the right thing to do, mm -hmm. enough reason to stay clear out of politics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if I should get into politics today, trust me, there are some lives that will not be touched. There are some lives that will not be transformed. Yeah, and no, I can totally understand what you're saying. Not all politics is uh, about the right actions for the right reasons. And I do know even in Australia, we have the, the self-serving greedy politician who is only in it because there's a government pension at the end of it and they just want to live the, the good quality life. Very few of them are really about caring about the, the constituents and the people they represent. So someone has asked me and suggested to me, perhaps I should, you know, go into politics and become the next female prime minister of Australia. And it's like, that's a lovely goal. And it sounds really lovely to say so. But I echo what you're suggesting that if I were to do that, who I would become would be compromised in order to represent that. And to me, the Australian exactly. political format and the, the platform that it is, is not honest and integrity driven enough for me to step up because I would be up against that because to me I would have to come from integrity and if I'm not in that environment I would feel compromised so I, I totally hear what you're saying there. In terms of what you're doing now obviously you're a very busy lady there's so many things that you do are there any other programs or other um areas outside of Cameroon that you are connected to or is there benefit in perhaps connecting to other um, resources outside perhaps on a more global scale is there any sort of um, I guess vision or agenda that you see yes of course there are so many of them um, you know after, uh, due to the with respect to the Women and Girls with Disability Peace Advocacy Network, you know, I was, I was um, selected as the country coordinator for Project Peace Light. Project Peace Light is an organization based in New Jersey, where, yeah, where they are focused on implementing peace education into the curriculum of every African country based on the agenda 1325, the resolution, resolution 1325, you know. So based on that, we have a lot, a lot of commitment. And um, it has been from one activity to another and at this point, I want to appreciate Petrogina for acknowledging me and for believing in my potential to be his country coordinator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, other people would say, no, 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 you are a person with disability, and this thing is not for persons with disability, you know. It is not disability focused. I I can't, I can't, I, I can't uh, get you involved. Yeah, but he personally wrote me and acknowledged everything I've been doing and, uh, and uh, pointed out the fact that he really wants me to coordinate the programs here in Cameroon because he believes that with my voice and with, with the way I am so passionate in the things I do, we are going to achieve the, the goal of implementing peace education because if this peace education was being implemented in the curriculum, in the educational curriculum here in Cameroon, I believe the, the extent at which the Anglophone crisis had gone 
we wouldn't have been, we, we wouldn't have reached that extent because the people involved would have been peace conscious. Yes. Yeah, they would have been peace conscious. Yes. So, and um, I'm also the digital ambassador for World Post. World Post is a global, it's a global platform for women mm -hmm. where we, we call it the heartbeat of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, where women are involved, so many things are bound to happen. And yeah, I was nominated this year as a as a digital ambassador for World Post mm -hmm. for 2021, where I'll have the 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 obligation, the responsibility of training other women, both disabled and non-disabled, training young girls, both disabled and non-disabled, on women's rights, on gender-based violence, on digital inclusion, how the world is, is going, is growing as a global village yes. through, through the digital aspect, how they have to embrace the world through the internet, you know, grabbing information, getting educated, how to use uh, or, or some platforms online on how to, and, 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 and improve your, your minds, you know, on the aspects of everything that is going, wrong, going on that surrounds women and girls in general. Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. And... Uh, Schedule you, I, 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 and in awe of how you uh, achieve all of this, it's quite amazing. <laughs> yeah, sometimes too. I, I used to wonder. I used to wonder sometimes when I'm sleeping, when I'm very quiet, when I'm having a quiet time. I used to think about all of this, like Lina, and how come in a very short while you've got you you you've gone this far. But there is one thing that is very certain. If you are focused and determined, there is nothing that can be more than you to achieve. Absolutely. Yeah. There is nothing that can be more than you to achieve. You know, recently, uh, Search for Common Gold just um, recognized my work and one other guy here in Cameroon from Diodoni who recommended me as one of the people, you know, from the family of disability mm -hmm. that has been striving for peace building. And on the 14th, you're going to have a meeting and to know the way forward of implementing projects and aspects as far as peace, be inclusive peace building is concerned in wow. Cameroon. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, it's such an important role too. I mean, and and for, for anyone that's listening, understanding that when we, advocate and educate regarding peace some of us in in countries like australia probably don't really understand well what's that what's the significance of that but when you're in a country that has civil unrest quite a lot and puts people's lives at risk just because there's so much aggression and so much political turmoil it really is up to the outspoken advocates to be able to bring sense and reason to what is going on. And it starts with education. So I think what you're doing is, again, astounding. It's it's such an important role that you'll be playing and what you've already achieved. Uh, I, 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 I sit here thinking, wow, this lady is quite amazing. What else is she going to do? What else has she achieved? But I know that you're very, very passionate and that I know from what you have shared and what I've read in your bio is because You've come from the struggle, you've come from the hardship, you've faced difficulty, and you've also seen that dark time where you thought perhaps being alive just really wasn't worth it anymore. And then that moment came where that counsellor was able just to drop a few key words into your active mind and got you thinking. And here you are, as you say, a short time later, and all of the things that you have achieved it's impressive, but it's also inspiring to think that you're in a country where these things are almost essential and you are that person that's being that voice and, and giving voice to people who need it. And I think that's quite amazing to be acknowledged 
Um, is there anything else on the agenda that you would love for the people who are listening to know that you're about? Yeah. Uh, my work is not only centered on persons with disability. That is one thing about me. I am too passionate about human life in general. I am too passionate about human, uh, human life in general. Sometimes I used to say that if I am too disability focused, I will be biased mm -hmm. because there are persons who are non-disabled. That means those assistants as well as persons with disability. When we talk about charity, it is not incorporated with disability. Mm -hmm. It is not. Charity is not working in partnership with disability. They have not signed any legal document. As there are people who are, who are non-disabled, who need charity more than people who are disabled. You know, they need charity more than people who are, who are living with disability. So my work is not centered only on persons with disability. Like I speak right now, I have three children in a town in uh, Boya, the Southwest, the, the, the heart of the Southwest region of Cameroon. Mm -hmm. They are orphans. Their father died due to stray bullet, um, stray bullet you know, and all of that. And their mother is being left at the mercy of, of nature mm -hmm. to take care of those, those three children. They are still in primary school. When the, when the news, when, when she heard about the work Lilian Debo Foundation has been doing, she got in touch with me. Mm -hmm. And she was like, if there is anything you can do for me, just do it for the sake of these children. Mm -hmm. And Terry, as I speak right now, those children are going to school in Boya. Those three children are going to school in Boya under the sponsorship of Lilian Debo Foundation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Here in Lilian Debo Foundation, we train IDPs who are women and girls. IDPs are internally displaced persons. Mm -hmm. Due to the crisis, people whose houses were being burnt down, they tend to leave and go to other towns to survive is a problem. Mm -hmm. Their houses, their businesses, you know, have been burnt down and there is no means of survival. So what do we do? We, 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 we get in touch with them, we bring them in, we train them on Ankara designing and beats making. We give them lead to business startups so that they can do something for themselves. Mm -hmm. And Lilian Debo Foundation has been a sponsor of a national youth, national youth outstanding leadership award program. It's it's the acronym is NAYOLA. Mm -hmm. The 2020 award of NAYOLA, Lilian Debo Foundation was one of the sponsors. Wow. Why, yeah, why, do, why we, we sponsor three categories. We focused on the counseling category because it was counseling that changed my mentality. Yeah. Yeah. So I tend to, to promote counseling. It is very, very important. If the mind is not okay, there is nothing you can do that you have positive results. If the mind is dark, there is nothing you can do to forge ahead. Mm. But if there is a little bit of light in the mind, trust me, with that little bit of light, you are going to see the way forward and you will move forward and do things. People will be amazed. Yeah. I, used to tell, I used to tell people that if you want to do business and you have not been counseled on how to go about the business, you will definitely slump. You would, you would, you, you, the, the business will collapse. If you want to get into Ankara and beat designing accessories and you've not, you've not been counseled on how to go about it, at the point you feel reluctant, you will not move ahead. You know, but if you have gotten that counsel, and your mind has been built on how to do things, if you reach a point where you, there seems to be no, no way forward, how to go about it, 
how to choose from plan B if plan A is not working. Trust me, you are going to make a positive impact in the society. That was the reason the Lian Devo Foundation decided to sponsor the counseling category. And another reason was that we want to change the mentality of how people see persons with disability. Yeah, Lilian Debo Foundation is owned by a young woman with disability who does not look upon her disability. If she is going to stand and fight for the rights of persons with disability to change the mentality, then she is going to do it without any fear or favor. She is going to do it without compromising. She's going to do it without looking behind. If persons with disability are going to gain that dignity, that respect, that self-esteem due to what Lilian Debo is able to do, then we are going to get it back. I've dedicated my life for persons with disability. I've just surrendered my life for them. Whatever place I go to, I speak persons with disability. I advocate for the rights of persons with disability. I don't see, I don't, I don't do it in a way that it should be focused only on me. No, it is a global fight. It is a family. I portray my family ahead. I don't portray myself. So it is high time the society change their mentality on how they see persons with disability. Because mm -hmm. we are not focused on what we see around us. We are focused on what our minds see and we strive to achieve it. We are focused on what we dream and we try to make those dreams to come to reality. And what do we need from the society is just a little push. We don't need anything much. We just need that little push, that little encouragement, you know, like you can do it. I so much believe in you. You can do it. Just go for it. I am strongly behind you. And trust me, if the society turned out to be this way, so positive, the world will be amazed at what persons with disability are able to do. Absolutely. Deep down inside of us, we have that potential. We have those skills. We have those ideas. We just need a little bit of encouragement. We just need a little bit of support. We just need a little bit of, of, of those positive words coming out from the outside, from the outside. Then we are able to give out what we have inside of us. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so important that we acknowledge that, yes, it's, in, it's, it's vital that we have respect for each other and say, I, I believe in you, you can do it. But not only that, but to be open and to hear with our ears and to listen with our hearts and to understand that when we are open to non-judgment and acceptance and support, we are just literally human beings in different forms. And it's about being able to represent each other in the global village. And I think the advocacy work that you do and the representation of people, not only just people with disabilities and also women and children and girls in the advocacy roles that you have, but that ability to speak up and be willing to see that it's not just about you, but self-care is very important. But if you are self-caring, you're then able to recharge that battery enough that it then becomes about how can I make a difference to the world around me? Because Ultimately, we are all part of the same world. And, you know, I'm in Melbourne, Australia, and you're over in Cameroon. But to me, it's a global village. If we can be part of that same collection of, of thoughts and ways of bringing peace and support and acknowledgement, then the whole globe has a, a better chance of us having a better outcome for, for children going forward. So I think what you do is, is just so powerful. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. And what I would like to be able to do is 
ensure that people know if you have a book that's available or if they can tune into your radio program. I'm not sure where people are going to hear from, you know, to be able to uh, listen to this interview or, you know, watch it on YouTube or, or listen to the podcast. But if they are able to, they can tune into your radio program and have they, if they can buy the book, all the better. If they can support you in some way, what I would like to be able to do is have your details in the description that follows this uh, YouTube video. And there'll also be a description that follows the podcast where we'll include some contact information for you that if people want to reach out and support Lillian Debo Foundation or even Lillian yourself, do people want to connect with you, they'll be able to do that. In wrapping up today, is there any one thing that you would like people to be able to do to support the Lillian Debo Foundation? Thank you very much, Terry, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm so grateful, you know, <laughs> talking with you. It has been, I feel the bond, you know, I just feel the bond deep inside. For people to support Lillian Debo Foundation, uh, I would say that there are times that we wish to do more than what we are doing. And we cannot stretch our hands more than the length it can go. But if we have people who so much believe in us in the work we do in order to reach out to more persons with disability, to more IDPs, to more orphans, to more aged women in the grassroots, then I will, be, I will be grateful for the rest of my life because I believe that is the work I have been called to do. And if I have people to support me in this work, then I will say I'm on a good footing. Absolutely. As I said, it's Sometimes been a pleasure. Yes, go ahead. Sometimes we need support. We need financial support, we need material support, especially mobility, mobility uh, uh, aids, mm -hmm. you know. We need more of that because we have women and girls here, we have persons with disability who need those tricycles, who need those wheelchairs, who need those white canes, those crutches, who, needs, who need those brain machines. They need those, those lenses, but they don't have it. Mm -hmm. If we can be able to have people who can help us, in order to get those things, in order to be able to buy those things. If they can support us with their finances, if they can buy it and send it to us, then we'll be grateful for the rest of our lives. Mm. And because we'll be meeting our needs, we'll be meeting our objectives, we'll be, we'll be aiming at our goals. Our goals are to bring hope, to bring back hope, to restore that dignity. Mm. If, we'll be, if we'll be able to have people who can find, help support us financially to set up more businesses, for women and girls with disability, for these IDP women, you know, so that they can be able to live their independent lives free from begging from the streets, we will be most grateful. So I don't know if I should give out my, my social media handles, my contact number, my email address or whatnot. I can include those in the description. I know that you've given them to me via email. So I'll put those in the description so that anyone who tunes in to watch this on my YouTube channel, or if they want to listen to this via the podcast, in the description for that, you will find the uh, information on how to contact Lillian and any other information if you can. So I guess just to wrap up, with the Lillian Debo Foundation, it would be so helpful for any listener who feels that they can in some way support the foundation now, financially, that would be awesome if you could contribute some way financially or if you do know some way to provide the resources that they need. If you are more local to the Cameroon area or somewhere in that vicinity or you know people there, by all means, if you can contribute in some way to help such an amazing foundation that is built on some of the most inspirational needs and supports of an amazing young woman, then you'll be doing a great deal of good it's just something that's so important. So in wrapping up, I just want to say thank you for your time, Lily. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. And thank you for sharing your story and what it is you're passionate about. And if we were to wrap up, what is it that you do in a nutshell 
and what let's wrap up with just what it is you do as the summary of all of your expertise. I'm a disability rights activist. I would say that that's just a summary. I'm a human rights activist. I would say that's a summary because I I don't I don't I don't want to see people I don't want to see people suffering, whereas there is something I can do to to uplift them. Each time I see people suffering, it breaks me. If it is within my reach, I help them. If it is not within my reach, it, break, it, it, it breaks me more mm -hmm. because I wish I could, but there is nothing I can do. So, and I would, I would like to say that wherever we are, wherever we find ourselves, wherever we are, whatever country, please, I'm begging, I'm begging, please. We should try as much as possible to help persons with disability. Persons with disability need help. We need that support. We need that assistance. Please, in your neighborhood, in your country, in your town where you are, please give them that support. It doesn't matter if they are coming from your family or not. It doesn't matter if they have a blood relation with you or not. Please assist them in whatever way that you can assist them mm -hmm. and trust me, you'll be doing a whole lot of good. Making a difference, absolutely. Well, you're definitely a, a woman with such passion and you make such an, an amazing difference. And I, I applaud you all the way and thank you for your time. Um, and it's just been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lillian. <laughs>